round one of the 2022 NFL draft is in the books and honestly probably the craziest draft in recent memory. Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown. I'm your host, Matthew Peterson. Coming up on today's show, we're going to look at a day two Broncos mock draft, see what's left out there for Denver to pick at number 64, along with looking at the top draft targets. So I think the best way to start things off would be looking at what picks the Broncos have as Denver will make their first selection at the end of round two. Now, maybe Peyton wants to move up again like he did last year to get Quinn Miners, but uh, I don't know. I think after losing a lot of draft capital to get Russell Wilson, if he's trading any direction, unless someone crazy starts falling, he's probably trading back instead of up. Now, three quarters of the NFL had a lot of fun tonight uh, during the NFL draft. The other quarter, including the Broncos and Broncos country, it was a little bit of FOMO. I'm not going to lie. I was watching a bunch of other teams make some trades, some wild picks come in, and I was like, all right, are the Broncos going to do anything sometime soon? So if you're excited for Denver to finally make a pick and get in on the action, go ahead and like the video. Hit the thumbs up icon. Let's put some good karma, some good draft karma out into the world before George Payton sends in the Broncos' first draft selection for 2022. Here are my top draft targets. It's a nice little mix, right? We put in a blender of realistic and dream draft targets, okay? Chad Muma, linebacker out of Wyoming, right up there in Laramie. Stays in the Mountain West region. Just come on down to Doe Valley, play a mile high. Leo Chanel, another linebacker out of Wisconsin. Uh, David Ojabo, an edge rusher from Michigan. Ojabo is one of those really enticing players. Used to be a first-round guy, ruptures Achilles. Maybe he falls all the way to the end of round two. I don't know. We can dream. Uh, Trey McBride and Bernard Raymond are my other two draft targets to keep an eye on. So before Denver was on the clock at pick 64, here were some notable guys that went ahead of them in my mock draft. Unfortunately, Ajabo not to be had, unfortunately, as he went to the Buffalo Bills at number 57. My J. San- my J. Sanders, another edge rusher out of Cincinnati. He went to Arizona. Uh, Cameron Thomas, we've seen a rush of pass rushers go here. He goes to the Bucks, And Trey McBride, the local guy, ends up in the Bay Area. I don't know, maybe teaming up with uh, George Kittle. So here's who I had to pick from. On the board, top guys here, Christian Harris, Troy Anderson, Kingsley Enigbari, Abraham Lucas, and Martin Emerson. Drum roll, please. In my last mock draft, I went with Troy Anderson. You guys were very upset about that. I'm a man of the people. And I had a better option this time. I went with Christian Harris, a linebacker out of Alabama. A three-year starter for Nick Saban. Here's the, the spark notes, the cliff notes for Christian Harris. He can do a little bit of everything, you know. He doesn't really stand out at any one spot, though. He can get after the quarterback. Of course, he can stop the run. He can help out in pass protection. He checks all the boxes. He just doesn't check them in a big, bright, bold Sharpie. It's a little bit of a the, the, the thin Sharpie pen, not the bold one we all like to see. So it'd be up to the Broncos coaching staff to try to find the best in him and whatever reason that couldn't come out during college, get it out in the pros. I mean, that's why you pay coaches anyway. But what do you think about this question? Who do you want the Broncos to draft in round two? You know, I went with Christian Harris in this mock draft. Would have loved to have gone with a higher profile name, but I think you got to also rein in a little bit on the realistic side of is David Ajabo, is Chad Muma, or Leo Chanel going to be there in round two at the end of it? I hope so. Um, But I wouldn't mind Christian Harris as a consolation prize, okay? What he did in his career in Tuscaloosa, 221 tackles, 27 of those for loss, 10 sacks, and he found an interception as well in 41 career games, making 40 career starts. That would not be a bad off-ball linebacker to acquire, especially when you got that position a little thin right now with Josie Jewell and Alex Singleton, you know, not a bunch of household names, we'll call it, helping out the uh, middle of your defense. We'll get to the rest of my mock draft in just a moment, but we are less than 500 subscribers away from reaching 8,000 subs. So if you're looking for a spot to get Broncos draft coverage this weekend or Broncos news and rumors the rest of the year, hit that big red button. You're in good company here at the Broncos Breakdown. 
Join one of the fastest growing Broncos YouTube channels out there by subscribing today at uh, by subscribing today at the bottom there, hitting that big red button. On to pick number 74. We're in round three. Here's what I'm working with. Some familiar faces from what we had a couple picks ago at 64. Uh, Enigbari, the edge rusher out of South Carolina. Martin Emerson. We've heard Peyton is... Very interested in going corner. Could it be Emerson? How about Daniel Falale, the uh, offensive tackle out of Minnesota? And ultimately, that's who I went with here. I felt like, you know what? I just don't know if we are going to see an offensive tackle pick happen at 64. I've heard a lot of inklings and rumors that Peyton's really looking at defense first. And maybe he's banking on Someone like Falale from falling from rounds two into round three. This guy's ginormous. Let's get that straight. He was the largest man in combine history pretty much since they started keeping records in 2003. I mean, nearly uh, seven feet tall, nearly 400 pounds. The guy was fantastic. So out of Melbourne, uh, um, Australia, I beg your pardon. So, yeah, I couldn't think of land down under. It's late here, all right? But, uh, yeah, I, I think this would be a home run pick in round three, especially for the value. And you think about Billy Turner at right tackle. Am I confident in that? Yeah. Am I jumping up and down about that? Not necessarily. So, yeah, why not add some extra competition in during training camp? We've got one more pick to come your way here in my mock draft. But first, if you're looking for a spot to watch day two, day three, of the 2022 NFL Draft, make sure you're watching over at Chat Sports by going to youtube.com slash chatsportstv. We'll be doing live coverage for every single pick of the draft. We are live for the entirety of the first round, having a blast, keeping it light, but also keeping it informed, keeping you guys informed and entertained all at once. So make sure you're watching and make sure you are subscribed to Chat Sports. Final pick of my day three mock draft or day two mock draft, Zachary Carter in round three, 96 overall. I wonder if Denver's going to say, let's let's try to replace Shelby Harris earlier than later in the draft. You know, I, I think Peyton may look at that interior defensive line. Now, he did sign DJ Jones in free agency, so that helps to recoup for missing, Jones, uh, for missing Harris. But in round three, I'm picking the best player available, okay? You may not have an immediate huge need at this exact moment for a defensive tackle but who knows down the line and you don't want to pass up on talent because you're like you know what that guy was good and he's way better than what we uh what we were looking at but we sure could go for a corner I also have heard that Denver's been looking at a corner but we saw a lot of smoke screens end up in pure smoke after the first round so just you know stay uh, you know keep your eye on that because uh it may not be a corner after all Looking at what Zachary Carter did, though, in Gainesville for the Gators, he was great. 11 tackles for loss and 8 sacks last season. You can move him around the defensive line, and coaches love that, especially later in the draft. A player that offers you a lot of versatility and can be a, you know your cliche chess piece, and you can put him at the 1 technique all the way to the 5 technique. Yeah, I think that's something that Peyton will be jumping at here in round 3. So here's my day 2 mock draft. Christian Harris out of Alabama at linebacker to help with that off-ball linebacker need. Daniel Falale, the offensive tackle for Minnesota, the mountain of a human being. And then Zachary Carter to help get after the quarterback because when you play Mahomes twice, Herbert twice, Carr twice, Kyler Murray this year, the list goes on and on. You need to sack the quarterback. So grade my mock draft for me. A, B, C, D, or F. Hopefully it goes better this time, but just keep in mind, we can't all get the players we want to see. It'd be that I wish we could. But unfortunately, when you pick at the end of round two, you got to sacrifice a little bit when you watch Russell Wilson highlights during the first day of the draft, which, don't get me wrong, is way worth it, in my opinion, especially when you saw just one quarterback go in round one tonight. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us tonight here on the Broncos Breakdown. We'll catch up with you later with more Broncos draft news and rumors.